I uh, just thought I'd give you a brief rundown on my uh, take on the uh, R2 uh, ladder tack. Uh, what we have over here is a, uh, a little oscilloscope. Uh, this screen will depict a uh, waveform in Tinkercad. We've got a uh, R2 ladder in here, which will increase um, by uh, integral power of 2 out to 8 bits a uh, signal. And then we have a uh, variable potentiometer being uh, digitized on the uh, analog input 0. Uh, what we'll do is we'll use that potentiometer to adjust the uh, frequency of our uh, little waveform here. And so uh, as we uh, drag the um, potentiometer around, we should be able to change the frequencies somewhat. And you can see that in the, um, in the oscilloscope. So that's kind of nice. Uh, let's take a look and see how that works. So what I did was um, I created a little um, delta theta, which will be used as my increment. Um, I created a constant and 128. That's the number of elements in my wavetable. Um, and then I uh, allocated in advance the space for the wavetable and set up some auxiliary variables for indexing into the wavetable. To initialize the wavetable right in through here, sine of theta is going to be a number that ranges from minus 1 to plus 1. I add 1 to that, so now it ranges from uh, 0 to um, 2, and then I uh, multiply by 120, so it ranges from 0 to 240, giving us uh, enough uh, space, head space, above um, between 240 and 256. We could probably have gone to 128 with this, or 127 would have been okay. But um, decided to kind of keep a little uh, headroom there, and then um, put that into my sine table, and then incremented uh, theta appropriately. Once the side table sine table is uh, pre-computed, uh, and we do that with the init sign, uh, we want to set up the data direction register to uh, output, um, and so they're all ones. And you could have done this one bit at a time if you like. Uh, this um, data direction register is being set all at once in binary, so that's what the B is about. And then for pin mode A5, that's being set up as an input because that's going to be your um, uh, your ADD converter input. In fact, when we look at it, it should say pin 0 because that's what we're reading. So it looks like there's a small blemish in the code because we're reading A0. And that's where the input is, so this must have worked out of dumb luck. But I'll take dumb luck. Better, better lucky than smart. And so then here comes the loop. We'll index by dx into the loop, where dx is controlled by the A to D converter, the uh, little potentiometer here. If the index is outside of the uh, range of the sign table, we zero it. That is, we check it and guard the input to the sign table to make sure we don't run off the end of the sign table. Uh, we output the value of the sign table using um, the assignment port D equals. And once that's done, um, the um, actual value in binary is written out to the various bits in port D, which is kind of nice. Uh, then we take the analog read in and compute our DX based on the value of the potentiometer. And that's it. So that's our, uh, that's our little wavetable setup. This is how we clock out the wavetable to this uh, parallel port, all the bits in parallel. And then uh, we use an R2 ladder in order to be able to create our DAC. And when you start the simulation, you get a nice 8-bit um, waveform whose frequency you can adjust by uh, diddling the pot. Hope you liked my little demonstration. Talk to you later. Bye.